Hey everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. The video that you're about to see is a review for the Tram Model 1480 antenna. After shooting the video, when I was looking up links and references, I learned that this particular model has been discontinued. The antenna in the video is about 6 feet tall. Tram has a smaller model that's 4 feet tall and a larger model that's listed as 17 feet tall. I don't have any direct experience with either of those, but the one I put together is holding up and working fine so far. Some of the retailers still have stock of the discontinued version. There are links for all of them with explanations in the description. Let's take a look at the review. Hey everybody, it's Tom. We're going to do something a little bit different today. I was searching for antenna masts here a couple weeks ago actually and I was looking on some of the big box stores like Home Depot and I put in antenna mast for a search. I was just looking for one of those 10-foot steel pipes that they use for mounting TV antennas and I was very surprised to see coming up in the search a dual band HF or sorry dual band VHF UHF base station antenna on the uh, Home Depot website. So I did a little bit more searching and I found that you can buy this antenna from Home Depot, you can buy it from Walmart, and you can buy it from Amazon. So some unlikely sources for ham radio antennas, but I went ahead and ordered one. I actually ordered this one from Amazon and I thought we would uh, put it together and see how it works. All right, so here's our Tram Model 1480 antenna. And I actually ordered this one from Amazon. So this is the first time opening it. We'll see what we have in here. One of our local club members has some experience with this antenna and he said his experience is the antenna actually works pretty well, but it, uh, it isn't uh, the sturdiest build in the world. He said that the, the radials on it can come loose fairly easily. Uh, well, the packaging is certainly a pretty sturdy build. All right, hang on and we'll get this on camera for you here. So here's the main element. Here's the uh, tube for the mount, and then there's a bunch of hardware, a bunch of hardware, uh, mounting brackets, radials, and mounting and possibly assembly hardware. So. Let's see if we can get the, the rest of this off. I think what we need to do is cut that shipping tape. That makes it a little easier. So as I said in the introduction, this antenna is available actually through Home Depot, through Walmart, and through Amazon. Uh, also, as I said, I bought this one from Amazon. I think it's exactly the same antenna, so it's just a question of shipping and price. And I believe the price was the same or within a couple of dollars for each. I do have a link for this uh, in the description for the video um, to the Amazon site. Truth in advertising, um, it is an affiliate link, so I'll get a little bit of uh, a little bit of a kickback that'll help. Won't change your price, but helps me keep this going. And here's the instructions, and I haven't read these in detail yet. Looks pretty simple. Uh, set screw pieces, 
And the instructions actually appear to be in pretty well written English. So no adjustment is necessary. Your model 1480 is pre-aligned at the factory for 144 to 148 and 430 to 450 megahertz. And it comes out of Edmond, Oklahoma, made in Taiwan. I saw that somewhere. It's not on this sheet. I think it was on the card. All right, let's get it put together and see how it works. So there's a brass element inside. This is the lower element because here's where the radials go and this is covering the SO239 connector. I hope you can see that on camera, okay? Sorry, I don't have my camera where I have a good view of the video. So it says tighten the set screw, but there's no set screw on that. And we'll see if I can get this to where you can see it, but the inside element, um, hang on. I'm gonna move this table and see if I can get this low enough where you can see in there, but there's a small, basically, hole or socket in the upper half of the element. I don't see any place for a set screw. So it does show the upper element coming down and a set screw. What it doesn't show is how do I get that upper element to come down. That's glued on, that's not screwed on. So, ah, that's bringing it down. There we go. We'll get the uh, trusty Leatherman multi-tool here. Aha! And we even have, wow, quite the coil on the upper element. And they have some foam here to keep it partly centered. And there's where the set screw goes. So hopefully, in this bag of hardware, there's a set screw because There's an Allen wrench for it. Bear with me while I go get a pair of scissors. So just so you know, I did not pre-open this or pre-read any of the instructions. I am learning this as you're watching it. So that's... Yep, there is one in there. Okay. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this completely out of the frame of the camera, but then I'm gonna move the camera so you'll be able to see this. Okay, we've got that in there. And the set screw is tight. I'm almost feeling like I should have put some Loctite on that. Pulling the lower radio and tightening the set screw securely with an Allen wrench. Slide the upper outer shell gasket cover and gasket onto the upper outer shell. That's going to be this. 
Gasket must be positioned no more than three and 15 16 inches from the bottom. And I'm guessing that that's this black tape marker here. So we're going to screw that in. This does have flats on it, so I can get some wrenches. I'll tighten that later. Screw the three radial elements into the threaded holes. Finger tighten and secure by tightening the lock nuts with a wrench. So here's my three radials. And here's my base. So the one thing that uh, my friend in the club said is that uh, where the radials screw in, is fairly, I think he's talking about this metal here that's they're screwing into. He said it wasn't the strongest in the world and it was really easy to strip the threads. And he had a heck of a time finding matching threads. It's some sort of an oddball metric thread size. Can you still see that? Yes, you can. All right. All right, I am going to get a wrench and tighten everything down. I'm not going to make you watch all of that. And then we will get the mounting pole and brackets and get that assembled and we'll take it to the next step. Well, I've got the antenna fully assembled and everything tightened up. And I've attached it to an aluminum pole that I have, an extendable aluminum pole that I use for portable and temporary work. And I just have that up, oh, about 15 feet or so off of my deck. And then I have the pole zip tied to the deck here. So we'll do some tests with this and see how it works. And then if this all works well, this antenna will probably be finding a home on the peak of the roof of my house. All right, I've got the antenna connected up outside, and I've got it cabled in here to my IC7100. And we're going to use the SWR meter that's built into the radio to check out how well the antenna matches. So we'll start here on two meters, and I'm actually going to use the SWR function that maps it, that's built into the 7100. So we're going to go to menu 3, and I'm going to pick SWR, and this will make a little graph for us of what the SWR looks like. Now the default is 10 kilohertz steps, and there's only five spots here, so... If we go to 9 bars and we make the step 500 kilohertz, that should, if I'm centered on 146, give us a graph from 144 to 148. So that'll cover the entire 2 meter band. And I've got my power set to about 25%, so let's take a look at uh, how this works and see what the antenna looks like. So we'll go all the way across the whole band here. All right, well, 
there's the SWR graph from 144 all the way to 148 and it looks like it's completely flat all the way across the band basically one to one that almost looks a little too good to be true so I'll tell you what let's just double check this here and so we've got SWR displayed and actually here we'll put the entire meter up so SWR is the second one up from the bottom and let's just double check at the bottom here so we'll do somebody's on uh, we'll go just off the bottom WA2 IVD testing nope, SWR was WA2 IVD testing right at one to one so let's go all the way up to the top of the band And we'll go up to, uh, we'll go to 9.8. I don't want to bring up any repeaters. I don't think there are any close by here on that frequency. WA2 IVD testing. And once again, it was one to one. So it looks like it's pretty good across the entire two meter band. Let's check out 440 next. Okay, we'll go up to the 430 megahertz, 440, 430. And this band is a lot larger, so with the SWR graph, that 9 steps and 500 kilohertz is as large as you can go. So I'm not going to get anywhere near all the way across the 440 band, because basically 440 goes from 420 megahertz all the way up to 450. So... That's a 30 megahertz spread. Now, this particular radio, the 7100, it will not transmit below 430. You'll see the little dots around my TX bar there. So we're going to start at 430, and we'll see how it looks. And again, I've got my power set to 25%. WA2IVD testing. Well, it looks like one-to-one. -one. Let's... Put the full meter up. WA2 IVD testing. So, one to one at the bottom end of 440 megahertz. And let's go all the way up to, there's the top end at 450. So, we'll just go to 49980. WA2 IVD testing. WA2 IVD testing. All right, one to one there. So, at least in terms of being a match, the antenna looks pretty good. It's pretty much one to one across the entire two meter band and across the entire 70 centimeter or 430 megahertz band. So, let's see if we can try to get into some repeaters and see how it performs. This is a 440 machine on the Kansas City City Hall. This is about 30 miles away from me. WA2 IVD testing. Anybody around this morning that could give me a signal check? WA2 IVD listening. 443.250. Is anybody around this morning? Well, it looks like we're bringing up the repeater, but nobody to give us a signal check. So this repeater is in Hoyt, which is north of Topeka, Kansas. And it is, hang on a minute here, and I'm going to look it up. That's about 57 miles from where I am right now. WA2IVD listening on 145.27. Anybody around that could give me a signal check? Well, I'm definitely bringing it up. You see the little squelch tail at the end. Doesn't look like we have anybody around to talk to. Well, next we'll try 
Lawrence, and this is about 35 miles away from me. We'll see how this one uh, works out. WA2IVD listening on 03. Anybody around this morning that could give me a signal check? Yeah, K, I think it was KK6, uh, PBX, WA2IVD. Name here is Tom, <clears throat> and uh, just testing out a new base station antenna, just looking to get a signal report, and the uh, repeater looks like it's full quieting into me, but uh, wanted to make sure I was getting into it okay. Okay, and I was only operating on 25% uh, power, so we bumped it up just a little bit. Just curious if that uh, might have gotten rid of the static there. We're located in uh, Spring Hill, Kansas. I think we're about uh, 30 miles or so from the repeater site. Okay, very good. Well, like I said, we're just uh, testing out an antenna here and jumping around to a few different repeaters to see how well we're getting out with it. But it sounds like it's at least getting out okay to Lawrence. So appreciate the signal report, and we'll uh, catch you again sometime soon. KK6PBX, WA2IVD. Well, that one seemed to work pretty well. Overall, on two meters, I'd say the antenna is working pretty well. We're getting into repeaters uh, 30, 40, 50 miles away, which is pretty good. And as I mentioned, we're located in Kansas here. You probably guessed that from some of the uh, cities. And in Kansas, the, the highest hilltop is usually the nearest highway overpass. So there's not a lot of hills here. Not a lot of repeaters in my area that are, you know, six or eight or 800 or 1,000 feet above uh, the valley floors or things like that from being up on mountaintops. So there are not a lot of repeaters here that have 100-mile range, and there's not a lot of places where you're going to make a 100-mile simplex contact without some pretty big towers. So overall, for being on a pole up on the deck on the back of my house, I'd say this is doing pretty well on 2 meters. We'll try a little bit more here on 440. I was recording these tests on a weekday morning, and I didn't want to make you suffer through more of my attempts to find people during a workday when things are kind of quiet. I have made contacts on both 2 meters and 440 since then. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the antenna. We just had a couple of days here with high winds all day long. The antenna is holding up fine, and I didn't notice any noise or scratches while using the antenna with the wind whipping it around. So not too bad for an antenna that you can buy from Walmart, Home Depot, and Amazon. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a click on the like button. If you're enjoying the channel, please consider subscribing. When you subscribe, you can also click on the bell icon to be notified when new videos come out. I would also love to get your comments with any suggestions, corrections, or questions. I'm Tom, WA2IVD. As always, thanks for watching Ham Cured Smoke.